Hey guys, welcome to my first lesson on the Novation Circuit Editor. This lesson is going to be surrounding this area at the top, the macro controls area. I'm going to focus my attention just on this box here, the macro one section. Each of these eight boxes is associated with one of the macro knobs on the Novation Circuit. Now, if you have the Novation circuit set up to transmit MIDI CC data, then this knob will be linked with the position marker on the macro control tab. For example, if I move the first macro knob, you will also see it move in the position marker on the macro tab. If the knob on the Novation circuit is all the way lit, it will have a parameter of 127 on the macro one tab. If it's turned off, it'll be zero. This allows you to adjust real time the position of the macro knob and to see the effect is super useful. Now this next thing we're gonna take a look at is the destination tab. So if I open this up, you'll see there's quite a few options here. All of these directly impact a parameter on the synth engine until you get to the mod matrix setting. Now, I'm not going to go too deeply into the mod matrix at this point, but a mod matrix is basically just an additional way to modify the synth engine. As you can see, there are 20 slots for mod matrixes, and each of those has its own destination. Exiting out of that for now, the copy tab will copy the parameters on macro one. This enables me to paste that parameter, parameter to any other macro tab on the screen. Now I'll warn you about this copy and paste tab can have severe impacts on the way the synth engine operates because a lot of the times your macros will be directly impacting the modulation and the settings of the synth itself. So be careful with that one. Paste to all is a tricky one. What it will do is it will paste to every single patch setting that you have in your bank. I'm not going to do an example of that. You guys can try that out. So I, I'm not a big fan of the paste option. Um, you can use it how you will. A lot of people like to have standard controls, but to each their own, you know? Okay, so if I click paste again, it will stop that. So basically, I just pasted um, macro one on top of itself. I'm going to skip the start position and end position for now and go to depth. Depth is how far the parameter is adjusted using the position. Okay, I'm going to illustrate the meaning of depth by applying the low frequency oscillator 1 to oscillator 2. Now, I have the way you, this is done is by using a mod matrix, and I'm not going to go into that in too much detail at this point, but as you can see, I am using the low frequency oscillator here as a source and the destination of oscillator 2. So I'm going to go here to the destination and I'm going to select mod matrix 2. I'm going to, if I give you an example of the way it sounds right now, there is no LFO applied. And that's because the depth is currently zero. If I were to turn this up, you'll hear an LFO applied to that sound because the position is maxed. Now, if I take the first knob and I adjust this down, you'll start to hear the LFO disappear. And that's because the position is modifying the depth of this parameter. Now, it's important to note that the depth does not actually show in the parameter being adjusted. And, which can get very confusing, but that's just the way it's set up. Um, there's not, nothing you can do about it. You just have to get used to it. 
So the start position and end position shows where the maximum depth parameter is reached when the position knob is adjusted. So the best way to illustrate this is just by giving you an example. If I take the end position and set it at 60, the position knob will meet the depth of 63 when it reaches the 60 parameter. Now you can see this by the purple lines here. All right. So if I give you an example of a sound and I adjust the position of macro knob one, it will hit the depth of 63 at the end position of 60. So now it won't be adjusted if I continue to go further. The best way to utilize this is if, for example, you want something to kick in after a parameter has already been established. Now, a good example of this is if I want the speed of the LFO to increase after it has reached a certain depth. So the way to achieve this is to utilize one of the additional three tabs available to you. So up here, I'm going to go to this extra tab. I'm going to set the destination to the LFO rate for LFO 1. I'm going to set the start position at 60, which is where the other tab leaves off, and I'm going to set the end position at 127. Now the depth is at zero right now, so that will mean that LFO1 will, will have a setting of 68, because that's the default parameter. If I were to adjust this up, it will adjust the rate up as well. All right, so here you can see the highlighting here indicates that it will kick in at 60 and then it will cut off at 127. As you can see, the exterior ring is grayed out until the start position. So I'm going to bring this position down to zero using the first macro knob. And I'm going to slowly bring this up to give you an example of what the sound sounds like. So as you can see, it's the LFO rate is not changing yet, but the depth intensity is changing. You can hear the LFO completely now. And here you're going to start to hear it increase in speed. And it's starting to create a tone at this point. All right, so I don't really like that buzz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the depth here from 40 downwards. And since the position is at 120, I'm going to set it to 127, it'll real-time adjust the speed of the LFO. So let's get this down to like 10. That sounds okay. Now I'm going to adjust this down again to hear what it sounds like as it slows and then fades out. So that's just an example. There's a infinite number of ways to use this, um, but that covers pretty much the entirety of the macro controls section. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.